the top five, a show where we can take a whiff, we can take a sniff, we can stick our noses in places and inhale deeply. This is top five. Five seconds in and I'm already gone. I'm sorry. Hey, this is one we talked about on um, on our Patreon VIP live show. Uh, Giving me four for our producers. To freak out about it. Yeah. Top five smells. Top five <laughs> smells this week. All right, and I'll, I'll start because I think Matthew's just like totally freaking out about this. My number five smell that I enjoy is oranges and orange blossoms. Just that as it's, you know, wafting through the air, you just take an inhale and you're like, mm, oranges. Or, you know, when you crack open the, the peel of an orange and you smell that zest coming out. Oh, I just love that smell. It's one of my favorite smells. In fact, it's my number five smell on my top five list. You know, we keep just in the house for one reason. Okay, what? You know how sometimes your uh, garbage disposal gets Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We do that with uh, the little um, tangerines. The the little cuties, yeah. Yeah, You turn that Mm -hmm. thing on and you throw a couple of oranges down there and you will have uh, just a a fresh, clean smelling uh, garbage disposal for days. Yep. I also do Mm -hmm. that with lemons, but oranges are, you know, the little uh, cuties or the little tangerines. I do that a lot, especially if the, (laughs) if they sit out for too long and you're like, ah, this may be going bad. You just throw that in there and boom, nice smelling garbage disposal. Rodrigo, what do you have for number five? I really expected Matthew to say that they only keep oranges in the house for one reason, and that's the scare away alligators. <laughs> Scurvy. Uh, we we are we are sailors in our house. Yeah. So uh, my number five smell is burgers. There's oh, really? this like yeah, burgers on the grill. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like mm-hmm. you walk in some place and it's a cookout, and it's like it smells like burgers. That's great because I love to eat burgers. And I could probably just extend this to beef in general. Like, yeah. you know, beef being cooked usually smells really good. Sometimes not so much. You know, that thing where you like smell something and it like the cooking process of it smells bad, but then you eat it and it's good. Yeah. Kind of like, mm-hmm. like boiling chicken or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, burgers smell good and they taste good. So my number five, burgers. Excellent. Nice. Matthew, what's your number five? My number five is a little weird, uh, but it is something that I have always found pleasant. When I was a younger man, uh, when I was a, I was a kid boy, we used to go, I was in the, I was in the grade school orchestra and the high school marching band. And we used to go on these trips where they would like rent a bus and a bunch of us jack wagons would get on a bus. And those buses of course were diesel powered, diesel fuel. And I always get you know, just a little nostalgic when I get a face full of diesel fumes for those days when we would, you know, drive around the state and fail to win medals and stuff. But for some reason, I've always just found that that not really strong, not like constantly yeah, or yeah. somebody right next to you, but just driving past and getting just a little bit of that diesel fuel, that whiff of, uh, you know, fl- fluorocarbons that's probably going to destroy the ozone layer, <laughs> however that works. But it's, it's always just kind of comforting and kind of awesome. And, you know, being from the Midwest, uh, 80% of the Midwest is a road going through a cornfield with a truck on it. That's actually a verifiably true fact. So any time you want when you live in Kansas, you can pretty much open your nostrils, uh, your, your smell basket, if you will, and get yourself a little bit of my number five, the diesel fuel. All right. I'm going to go the other way. And go with something a little bit cleaner for my number four. And I know a lot of people don't like this, but I, d- I guess I don't smell it that often. Uh, but like when you're when you're doing your laundry and you got to put in a little bleach in with your whites to get them white. I just really like walking into a house where the laundry has been going and there is that kind of a, a hint of bleach smell in the air because you know that you're going to get some fresh, clean laundry. And I don't know what it is because my wife is just like, oh, I hate the smell of bleach. And she thinks it's the worst thing in the world. And I've got a friend who is allergic to like if he smells bleach, he'll like break out into hives and stuff. Uh, But for me, I kind of dig the smell of bleach in the laundry because I I think it smells like clean. What were you going to say, Rodrigo? Well, I was going to say, you know, your your wife probably hates it for the same reason since she works someplace that has to be regularly disinfected. Yeah, 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 that may be it, too. But I don't yeah, smell the smell of def- bleach at the hospital, though. I smell that. Well, 
antiseptic no. smell or whatever. But uh, yeah, yeah that, that heavy duty antiseptic with the kind of the weird alien sort of lemon smell. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I like take a cap of bleach and pour it into some hot water and let it spin. I kind of dig that smell. Mm. Yeah, don't smell it too hard. No, 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 no. It's just you know, it's it's just that passing that passing smell that it's like ah, okay, cool, fresh laundry tomorrow. <laughs> Rodrigo, what is your number four? Uh, my number four is maybe a, a little strange, but uh, I, you know, uh, when it starts to get cold, or maybe you have one day um, in the fall where it gets like really cold, cold all of a sudden, and your um, heater that you have set to a particular temperature like kicks on suddenly because it's just got too cold for the ter- thermostat. Um, and you get that smell of like burnt dust. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I don't hate that smell, and you know, come to I've thought about it a lot, and it's like there's something actually something that's weirdly comforting about that smell, and I think it's just me thinking like I am not homeless. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I live in I live in a house, uh, and I have a heater, so I mean, I'm I'm like life is good, man. It's like yeah. the the smell of burnt. Or like you know, heated up dust yeah. represents me like you know being okay. Good reminder also to change your filter. Yep, that too. Yeah, that's true. Matthew, what is your number four? My number four is weird because it's kind of hard to describe, uh, in as much as I know that, for instance, my wife loves coffee, and she drinks coffee the way that you know I eat food, which is to say. Lots of it, but it doesn't ever taste the way it smells. Right. And there's kind of a particular brand or a particular flavor that she has that smells really amazing. And sometimes I go to work, and when I first walk in, I walk in an entrance that is right over by an area where there are x ray machines and coffee machines. And somehow you get this strange kind of almondy smell that I can really only describe as somewhere between Stacy's coffee. And a an uh, ice cream cone, you know how you get those uh, preformed ice cream cones yeah. at the store, and it's kind of yeah. almondy. I don't know if it's, it's a it's vanilla. Like, yeah, weird. It's but it's a vanilla kind of nut extracty really thing. I don't know what it is, but I love it. And now that I do have to actually do some walking in order to get to my office, I always have to walk through a cloud of that, and it's really pleasant to just you know. You have that sort of almondy vanilla smell that I think of as coffee tastes terrible. Why am I even, you know, smelling this and feeling so really awesome? But if anything tasted as good as that smelled, then I would drink that all day, every day. But I can't even, I mean, it's just to the point where you can't even really describe it. But I'll tell you one thing. You'll know it if you ever smell it because it's kind of like almonds and it's kind of like, what are those other nuts that they put in things? Hazelnut? Yeah, that's the one. Hazelnut. It's kind of like that. So let's call it that. That's my number four. Okay. That hazelnut thing. (laughs) So my number three is one that, uh, again, maybe not a lot of people like, but if it hasn't rained in a while and then it comes and it rains really, really hard for a very short amount of time, and then you go outside and you you take a smell of that, it's not like that new rain smell but it's like the mm-hmm. rain has hit the dirt and churned up the the little molds and spores and dust and whatever and so it's kind of that dusty humidity wet smell Petricor. yeah something like that whatever that smell is right after a rain or right before a rain you know you can tell when it's about to rain because you can smell it in the air mm-hmm. and maybe sometimes there's a little bit of ozone mixed in if you um if you've had some lightning but that that rain smell just gets me every time, and I love it. I, I I can stand outside for you know twenty minutes after it rains, just smelling that smell of rain. I love it because it doesn't rain that often here, and it is my number three smell. Rodrigo, what do you have for number three? Uh, my number three is uh, a smell that I've always enjoyed, but really came to my attention when I was uh, working as a as a video producer in Kansas, and I was running all over all these agricultural areas 
Um, and let me tell you, a lot of the time, agriculture agriculture smells terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> it it was a, it was a rare treat to find some place that smelled good. And this was when I went to an ethanol plant. And ethanol plants don't always smell good. Like there was an ethanol plant in the in the town that I lived in, and a lot of the time, the whole town smelled like egg drop soup, which mm-hmm. is not a pleasant smell to have in the air like you can feel however you want about egg drop soup but you don't want your town to smell like it um (laughs) but uh this plant that i went to you know we went through the whole thing i was shooting and we were interviewing people as we were going and then we got to where they kept the distiller's grain and what distiller's grain is is um uh, when they make oil or basically when they make ethanol out of corn there's Basically, the the matter, the chunks like that that are left over, are uh, called distiller's grain, and it smells like Fruit Loops. So, <laughs> I I walk into this kind of like uh, kind of like this barn type area, and there's a uh, like one of those little like Tomcat uh, um, little mechanical like scooper guys. Mm-hmm. Um, like the like the ones where it's like a single person just like Nyeh. little and it's just cat like, yep. loaders. Yep, and it's just like scooping up all of these uh all this gunk, this like kind of like orangey reddish gunk. And I walk in and it just like it's like the strongest smell of fruit loops I've ever had. And I'm like I turn to like the the guy that I was there with and I'm like, Am I having a stroke? They're like, You're you're smelling this too, right? I'm like, yeah, apparently distiller's grain smells really good. It smells like fruit loops. Very That's cool. cool. Yeah, neat. You learn something every day. Matthew, what is your number three? My number three actually wasn't on the list until I got home from work today and actually made it. Um, This is uh, kind of a thing. Every Christmas when I was a very young boy, my grandmother, who was, I don't know, somewhere between 80 and 7,000 years old, used to make pies. And this was her deal. She would make pies. And one of the pies that she would make was a mince pie with raisins and apples and currants and things in it. And it had this combination of like clove and nutmeg and allspice that to me has always smelled like Christmas. And so I, every once in a while, just have this craving for a mince meat pie. And uh, this is a spoiler for you. You can't get those in central Kansas for some reason. Nobody makes them. The stores don't. I went to a pie shop. They're like, we don't even know what that is, man. It was really, really disturbing. So a few years ago, and now every Christmas, my wife has started uh, importing pies from Britain and getting little boxes of the little mincemeat pies. And this last Christmas, she got me a big can of mincemeat filling and I've had it since Christmas and I'm like, I'm going to make a pie out of this. So today I came home and I made my number three smell a mince pie with that really strong, almost like kind of a Moroccan or middle Eastern kind of just really sharp, spicy smell mm. to it. The whole house smells like Christmas. I had one piece of the pie and I'm like, I'm just going to leave the pie here to stink up the joint so that the whole house smells like Christmas all throughout July. Because why not steer into the skid? Yeah. But I, I, it's fascinating to me because whenever I talk about this, people are like, ooh, that's gross. Why would you want a pie with meat in it? And I'm like, well, there isn't a lot of meat in it and it doesn't taste like meat. And Well, but, but like, I mean, there's like chicken pot pie, right? It's like that's something that people eat in the United sure. States. Yeah. And this is, I mean, this is really weird because people have this visceral response to that's weird and we don't like it. I'm like, you, you're eating apples and raisins right now, Nancy. What are you doing? <laughs> Not mentioning any names. Uh, by, by, well, I, except I for think Nancy. if you take cloves, you know, those, mm-hmm. the full cloves and you stick them in an orange, um, yeah. you, you get, get the you get same smell. Similar. Yeah. You do get something similar from cloves. I used to smoke clove cigarettes because, well, I was a teenager. Yeah, I, I ate some hamburger sandwiches and French fried potatoes because I was a teenager after all. But there's just something wonderful about that combination of the clove and the, the nutmeg and just oh, it makes me happy. It makes me think of being a child. And, you know, yeah, that that isn't always a good thing for me. <laughs> we had to pull plows when I was a kid uh, at a chihuahua and uh, 
That was a long story. My number two, a little bit having to do with farms because my second favorite smell of all time Mm -hmm. is the smell of fresh cut grass. (gasps) Not just any kind of household grass that you have laying around your yard, but specifically alfalfa grass that that farmers will grow in their field to cut and and, uh, bundle to give to the cows and and Mm -hmm. stock animals during the wintertime. He was Ooh. my favorite. It's called alfalfa grass. <laughs> yes. When they cut that grass, it usually happens in uh, mid to late summer, like right about now. I just love driving with the windows down past the fields and just inhaling deeply because it is just like a heavenly smell of that grass. It smells so good. When we used to live at our other house, which was really not that far away from where I'm at now, there was an alfalfa field right behind our house. And oh boy, when we don't open the windows in the house very often because of my wife's allergies, but when the alfalfa grass gets cut, those windows go up for a whole day so we can just take it all in. Ah. Yeah, that's the, that's part of the issue with living in Kansas is that actually, uh, crop harvests actually smell really good. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, sorghum smells really good, yeah. corn, wheat, because it has, it has oh, a yeah. cereally smell to it. It's it's really um, crazy when the wheat, you know, when the wheat is about ready to be harvested, it just, before they cut it, you can smell it and it smells good and it smells grainy. It's, it's really fascinating. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and of course the real issue, especially if you live in haze, is that haze is like downwind from a feedlot. Unfortunately. So it's like, it's just a roll of the dice. Uh, are you gonna, are you gonna get like, uh, you know, basically flesh or like freshly cut, uh, lawn times a thousand or cow poop yeah, times cow a poop. thousand. Yeah. That's unfortunately because the wind generally blows from the South. We get yep. the number two. <laughs> literally. Uh, number two. <laughs> Speaking of number twos, <laughs> Rodrigo, what do you have for number two? Wow. That was, that was we, the best pun transition we've ever done in this show. Thank you. Thank and you we didn't much. even complain about it. No, I just roll with it. Uh, yeah. So my number two uh, does not involve number two. It is uh, the smell of a freshly opened pack of Magic the Gathering cards. <laughs> oh, um, and it's it's less it's less for me to be like, you know, like open it and be like, yeah, magic the gathering. But, um, it's more because it conjures when I first started getting into the game and I was like buying a lot of packs and opening a lot of packs. And, um, you know, magic is a game that I really enjoy. And when I was first getting into it, it was actually kind of an an intense experience to start learning the game and figuring it out and getting into it to the point where, um, like there's a handful of songs that happen to be in my playlist at the time and when they'll come around or whatever, I don't listen to them very often anymore, but when they come around or I hear them, they sound like magic. You know, they sound like, uh, the time when I was doing this and I was getting into the game. Um, and every once in a while I'll open a pack and I'll catch a whiff of this, you know, basically just cardboard. That's what it smells like. Um, but it will like remind me of this time when like the the whole game was open to me and it was all brand new and I wasn't spending a lot of time complaining about uh magic checking boxes. Um <laughs> blah 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 I'm on cat block. <laughs> Matthew, what is what is your number two? Uh you may not know this about me, guys, but uh I love me some comic books. I do. And there is a thing that happens with comic books of a certain vintage, and they usually have to be pre-1984, uh, and that's actually being conservative about it, because usually the perfect window for this is between about 1955 and about 1973, 74, right about the time of the big paper shortage. And what happens with a comic book made of newsprint is that it starts to break down. It actually starts to disintegrate. It turns brown, and it gets this distinctive comic book smell. And there's a window here because you have to be careful. Like a a really low kind of a smell from a comic, you know, a noticeable kind of acidic odor 
can in fact lower the grade of your comics. So it's one of the things that I used to do professionally when I was grading books is you had to smell the damn thing. Um, but there's a there's kind of an, a window between a dark brown comic that's about to fall apart in your fingers that smells like, you know, the Crypt Keeper's mom and just a book that is starting, just getting that acidic hint with a little bit of almost mold, which is weird because I'm allergic to mold, spores and fungus. But I just love when you take a comic and you take it out of the bag and you just get a little tiny bit of that acidic kind of silver age comic smell. And you're just like, yeah, that, that's uh, something I love disintegrating in my very hands. And yet somehow it's pleasant. And, and, that's, and I mean, that's how smells work, right? Yeah. It's like that's, that's how our nose oh, yeah. perceives things. They're particles. Yep. So most yep. of the time you are smelling chunks of what you like yep. or yep. don't and like. And there is that, and that it's, sensory, you know, connection to the, the memories that are associated with those smells. Oh, sure. It's all tied up in the fact that, you know, comic books is pretty awesome. And in, in many ways for the last, how long have we been doing this? 12 years, 11 years, 11 years. Yeah. For the last 11 years, at least comic books have been a major part of what I do, not necessarily what my job is, but what I do. So there's really something just wonderful. And the fact that that is my number two smell knowing you, now you have to ask yourself, what does Matthew like more than comics? And I'll tell you. Uh, you know, I was going to have, I was going to have old book slash comic book smell as yeah, my number old one. Books get that too. Yeah. But, um, but I didn't, I mean, it would certainly be in my also rands, uh, but my number one smell comes a few months after the alfalfa grass gets cut and you mm-hmm. go outside or it's in the early evening and it's that crisp fall evening and there's just enough chill in the air that a few people say, Hey, I want to start uh, a fire in my fireplace. And so you get that whiff of that burning wood coming from a fireplace. And I love that, that little smell. Cause it always to me feels like fall and cool and things are changing. I'm not talking about the smell of a forest fire. I'm talking about just, you know, your friendly neighborhood, uh, household, um, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Yes. Those are the smells <laughs> that I like a sweaty man swinging from building to building in a, in in a full body suit that has no ventilation. Yes, that is it. That that he's been wearing since he was 16 years old. <laughs> and probably hasn't washed or has his girlfriend wash occasionally. But yes, my number one, burning wood from a chimney. That is my number one smell of all time. Even though, ironically, I hated cutting wood and hauling wood to burn in the fireplace growing up as a kid. So there you go. Rodrigo, what is your number one? My number one is um, cilantro. Mm. And um, cilantro is uh, an herb that is very important in Mexican cooking, um, definitely central Mexican cooking. So, like, my mom puts it in everything. Um, and I... I other than that, other than potentially like the memories and, and the flavor or whatever is like, I like cilantro has a, like a really strong, clean smell. Um, and also weirdly, it's not, uh, it's not really a smell that travels. Like you have to get pretty close to cilantro to actually smell it. Like y- your kitchen doesn't smell like cilantro if you take it out. Um, but your hands definitely will if you, then for a while, if you uh, manipulate it for some time. Um, Manipulating cilantro is my new cover band, by the way. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, so I, uh, <laughs> like I said, I had, uh, or like my mom really cooks everything with cilantro, which made it really difficult because I had a, a girlfriend um, at the time, uh, at a particular time, who had that thing where cilantro tastes like soap. Like this is apparently a thing for some people mm-hmm. genetically, they, their taste buds are different and cilantro tastes like terrible. <laughs> it tastes, it tastes like soap. And I was like, Oh man, what are we going to do? So, uh, we just like asked my mom very nicely not to put cilantro in things, but it's like one of those things where it was like, this may have been doomed to failure from the beginning. <laughs> you know, it's just like, it's like, we can, we can overcome a lot of things, but I don't know if we can overcome my family's reliance on cilantro. 
Yeah. So uh, my my number one smell cilantro. All right, mm-hmm. cool. Matthew, that brings you brings us to you with your number one smell. And you say to yourself, you're like, hey, what does Matthew love more than comic books? And I'll tell you, this one is very important because it is a combination of things that may or may not smell good in and of themselves. And those things are my wife and a perfume called opium. And it is very important that I explain this to you. I do not like the smell of opium. The opium perfume that used to hang around my bedroom and would be sometimes, you know, there was a body wash. It was the same thing. It was in that hate. It cannot stand the smell of the stuff. It is just weird and awkward and spicy and just black. And I don't like it. But when you put it on my wife of 20 odd years, for some reason, it's just, oh my God, it's amazing. It's just wonderful, wonderful kind of jasmine and incense and weird wacky kind of stuff and if you if she's wearing it and it is god awful expensive so it's not something that we always you know will have in the house i don't always have two hundred dollars to spend on like body wash and perfume and junk but when she has it you can always tell and you can always be like hey wait i smell stacy walking down the hallway with her opium perfume on and it's amazing it's awesome it's great But again, if it's just the bottle of perfume, I'm like, blech. So it has to be specifically the opium on my wife or someone with similar body chemistry, presumably. I've never smelled it on another person, so I don't know if it would be just as good on another person. So we're going to go with the one thing that I love more than comics is my wife. And everybody out there can just go, oh, thanks for not depressing us and killing people this week. So yeah, um, (laughs) it's specifically the opium on my wife. That is my number one smell. And that's something that for years and years will just bring back happy memories of being happily married. Because, you know, I've been happily married for 10 years and 22 overall. So you know how that works out. Do the math there. Oh, all, all right. Um, Steven just no sold by joke. Thank you, Steven. <laughs> um, no, I made it better. Uh, <laughs> what'd you have on your ulcer rands? I had chocolate chip cookies. Always a big favorite. Those fresh out of the oven chocolate chip cookies are, are, are high on, on that, uh, runner up list. I also mentioned the comic book old book smell. I like mm-hmm. the smell of, um, new, the literally the new car smell, right? When you get a new car and you get in it and it's like, oh, you can still smell the new car smell in here. I love that. I also like. Uh, a pipe tobacco smell. I yeah, don't smoke like, pipes, but pipe tobacco, uh, great. My great grandfather used to smoke this weird cherry pipe tobacco. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. It's literally almost the only thing I remember about the man because I was a little, little tiny kid. But I always remember just the smell of that pipe tobacco yeah. being amazing. One of one of my first cars. You remember the 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 Hyundai hatchback. I had uh, mm-hmm. got from my uncle Ed and he was a habitual pipe smoker and lived up in Wyoming where it's probably a good idea to keep the windows rolled up. So the car smelled like pipe smoke all the time, but not in a horrid, like cigarette, you know, awful kind of smell, but a rich, pleasant, this smells like a pipe tobacco smell. So that's on, on well, my, uh, well. also ran list. Rodrigo, do you have any also rands? Yeah, I had, um, like horchata and like tamarind, but I didn't want to make it a travel, like a smell travelogue of Mexico. Um, <laughs> I also, I also kind of like how dogs smell, mm-hmm. um, which is weird because dogs are kind of stinky, but like it, not, not like necessarily wet dog, but it's like, you know, it's like my dog walks by and she has a particular smell. And it's like when I get home, and I know that she's around. It's pleasant. You know, mm-hmm. and that might just be one of those ties. I also, I like the way that matches smell. Like when you strike oh, yeah, a match. Yeah. 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 I mean, you strike I, it or I, when you blow it out. When you, uh, yeah. When, when it's blown out and okay. it's just like that, that kind of, uh, rich sulfur yeah, yeah, smell. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Matthew, do you have anything else? There's a particular smell and I don't know if it is like, if it's some sort of, uh, fertilizer or if it's some sort of special additive but whenever you go into the farm supply store oh yeah yeah there's this really strong smell that's kind of like what you talked about that smell of the the rain Uh right after it rains i don't know what it is but it's it's fertilizer it's a i think it's ammonia or something yeah could be and it's one of those things where sometimes you just want to go to the tractor supply shop just so you can smell that 
Yep. That pleasant smell and then move on with your day. Yep. Yep. There you go. Also toast. Toast is a good yeah. one. Toast is a good toast one. Toast is a very good one. We have a toaster in my office and I don't like to use it because it sets off the smoke alarm. And uh, because Maybe of the nature dial it of my back office. down from 10. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. <laughs> if you set off the smoke alarm in my office, you've set off literally alarms throughout the building, sometimes with flashing lights. Or probably the county. Yeah, it's 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 a big deal to set off the smoke alarm. So I don't use it very often, but it's nice to just have that nice comforting smell of toast in the workplace when you're getting yelled at by strangers for eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, listeners, there you go. There are our top five smells. And you thought this was going to be a horrible one. It's it, your it, turn. Yeah, I, I did think that. Head over to Majorspoilers.com and in the comments section, share your top five favorite smells. We want to uh, see what they are, and maybe it will trigger some memories for us as well as others. And, of course, we love reading them, and we love smelling your lists, and everyone else does too, because uh, everyone loves a list, and we will talk with you next time. This podcast is copyright 2017 by Major Spoilers Entertainment, LLC. 